Have you ever questioned the origins and implications of the practice of reciting Darud? It's a practice that's become a compulsory routine for many traditional Muslims. But where did it come from? Who started it? The practice of reciting Darud, an invocation to send blessings on Muhammad, was not something that emerged out of thin air. It was invented by Muhammad worshippers of earlier generations. They were the ones who began this practice, but it didn't stop there. It was further promoted and consolidated through various hadiths, sayings and actions attributed to Muhammad. These hadiths played a pivotal role in solidifying the practice of reciting Darud among Muslims, making it a routine that many adhere to today. So the practice of reciting Darud was developed and solidified over time, but what were the purported benefits? The benefits of reciting Darud, as described in hadiths, are numerous and varied. These benefits range from the practical to the spiritual. On a practical level, reciting Darud is said to enhance memory, eradicate poverty, and provide solutions to complex problems. These tangible benefits are complemented by spiritual rewards and blessings that are believed to flow from the act of reciting Darud. However, this practice is not without its controversies. The most significant of these is the risk of associating the Prophet Muhammad with God, a theological transgression known as shirk. In the Islamic faith, shirk is considered the only unforgivable sin, one that directly contravenes the monotheistic principle at the heart of the religion. The practice of Darud, while seen as a form of devotion, can lead to the inadvertent elevation of the Prophet to a divine status. This, in turn, can lead to the violation of the Quranic command of not discriminating between messengers. Furthermore, the verse often used to justify Darud is argued to have been misinterpreted and taken out of context. The verse in question 3356 is believed to call for support of a living prophet rather than the utterance of flattery for a deceased idol. It's important to note that the command to support him in the verse was addressed to the Prophet's companions in Medina during wartime emergencies. In conclusion, while reciting Darud may be seen by some as a beneficial practice, it carries with it a potential risk of committing shirk. But to understand the full implications, we need to delve into the Quranic context. The verse often used to justify Darud is perhaps misinterpreted and taken out of context. This verse, chapter 33, verse 56 of the Quran, has been traditionally interpreted to call for blessings or salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad. However, a closer look at the context and language used suggests a different interpretation. The term salah, often translated as bless, might be more accurately understood as support. This reinterpretation shifts the meaning of the verse dramatically. Rather than instructing followers to constantly utter blessings for a prophet who is no longer with us, the verse seems to call for support of a living prophet. This interpretation aligns more closely with the Quranic command not to discriminate between messengers. It also avoids the potential of committing shirk or associating partners with God, which is considered the only unforgivable sin in Islam. So if this interpretation holds, the verse does not support the practice of reciting Darud with Muhammad's name every time. Instead, it emphasizes the importance of supporting the message and mission of living prophets. The practice of reciting Darud thus is not supported by the Quran or the historical context of the verse. It's important to question and understand the practices we follow. By doing so, we ensure that our actions align with the core tenets of our faith rather than simply following tradition without understanding its origins or implications.